welcome to Screen Smart. I'm your host, April Whiting, a certified screen safety educator. This show is dedicated to help you thrive in a tech heavy world. Today, our guest is Luke Mickelson, founder of Sleep and Heavenly Peace. Hey, Luke. <laughs> April, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. 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 Thank you so much for being here today. Of course. Of course. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I want to start with, I love your story. And so I just want to turn it to you to tell us who you are and what you do. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I'm just a small farm kid from Idaho. Let's, let's make sure we all understand that. <laughs> but uh, no, um, you know, April in 2012, and I've told you this story many times, but um, 2012 was an interesting year for me. I, you know, I had a full-time job. I was coaching my kids and and uh, active in my church service. Um, and at the time, I was a I was a leader over a, a, the the boys' church uh, uh, programs, uh, basically boy, basically Boy Scouts, and then some of their spiritual um, development. But um, in our meetings as leadership, uh, we've discovered or was told about a family that was in need. And one of the needs they had was uh, children didn't have any beds. And, you know, at first, I, it was just hard to fathom or think about it. Um, but the more I thought about it and the more I talked with the boys, I said, hey, this is something I think us as, um, as a scout troop and a, as, a, as a boys group can, can solve or we'll, we'll take this on. And, uh, you know, we thought about getting beds donated. I thought about just going buying some beds for them. But then the thought to me came to me thinking, you know, here's a great opportunity to teach these Boy Scouts, these young 12 to 17 year old kids, the value of, of woodworking and using tools, you know, get an Xbox controller out of their hands and let's get a sander in it. <laughs> and uh, and so, we, you know, I, I went home that night and, and my daughter had a bunk bed and I told my wife, I said, you know what, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to try something here. And she got that crazy look in her eye going, oh, great. Here goes, here goes Luke again. I patterned it after my daughter's uh, bunk bed. And, and I took these boys and for that week, you know, a couple of nights, a couple of hours each night that week, we ended up building this bunk bed for this family and, uh, and delivered it. And the kids, uh, I didn't get to go on the delivery. I was staying back clean in my garage, but the kids the next day and the, and the leaders that went, just talked about how what a wonderful experience it was. The the kids were so happy and the and the family were were so grateful for what what uh, what they had. And uh, you know, being at Christmas time, you know how it is, April. You got kids. Mm. You know they complain about the presents. They know you're not going to get them. And you know, and, and here's a parent you're worried about and the stresses of Christmas and finances and all that jazz. They were all going through my mind. And and here a week ago, I just had this wonderful experience. And I thought, you know what? I need to get off the couch. I need to take my kids out in the garage and I'm gonna teach them uh, the, the, the fun that we had with these Boy Scouts building these beds. And so that's what we did. I had some leftover wood and we, we went to town. And so for a couple of nights, a couple, three, four nights that week, me and the kids and the fam, we built another bunk bed. And the, the cool thing was, is, uh, well, cool or not, I didn't know of of any child that was sleeping on the floor. I know I wanted to give it to a child. You know, I just didn't know how, uh, where to find him. And, and my wife, uh, my wife said, well, why don't you put it on Facebook, uh, uh, one of these garage sale ads. And so that's what we did. And, and sure enough, one of my friends, um, in, in the town over 30 miles over called me up and said, Hey, I've got, I've got a really bad situation. Um, I have a mother and two daughters, uh, they've been sleeping in the back seat of their mom's car since they were born. Um, never, never had a bed before. They just got a house, um, and I said, "Absolutely, Tanil, we're we're on it." So it was the first time I got to be able to go on a delivery and witness um, the tragedy that is child bedlessness. And so when I walked in the room and and saw Haley and how excited she was that she had her own room, which was really cool, but also really sad because. In the house, the only thing in the house was a hot plate sitting on a milk carton that had a can of soup on it. That was it. There was nothing in that. No TV, no couch, no, no table. And certainly in her room, there was nothing. Um, the only thing that was in her room that really shocked me was uh, the pile of clothes she had in the corner. 
And I quickly realized that's what she's been sleeping on. She'd go home after school, take her clothes off, sleep on her clothes, you know, change out of her PJs back into school clothes that she just slept on and then go to school. Um, so when we delivered a bed, it was really, I was really excited about it, but to see little Haley and, and how she would hug and kiss the bed and hug us. And, and, and then the mom was probably got me just as equal, equally heavy. It, it, she just started crying, you know, and you could see this six years of struggle and worry that a mother might have or would have knowing that her child's not sleeping very well. Um, that was all going away. And, and it came from, it came from one bed. It came from a few nights, a couple of hours each night from, from a family in a, in a small town. And uh, it, it just changed my life since. Yeah. And so it, it grew a little bit from there, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us where you're at now with you created this nonprofit called Sleep in Heavenly Peace. And tell us what it's doing now. Well, you know, it's funny, April, uh, uh, I, this was just going to be a Christmas project. In 2012, that's all it was. And, and I had a buddy of mine come down from Boise, and he says, oh, I want to do this too, up in Boise. So the next year, we did it up in Boise. In fact, I don't even think we called them chapters at that, at that time. Um, and, but we started doing it more and more. And the, about the third year, we realized, um, number one, it was expensive because we, we started doubling the amount of beds that we did every year. Um, and a lot of people wanted to donate and they kept asking us, are you a 501c3? And I said, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, quickly we, we realized, you know, if we did this and we made it a charity, you know, then we could probably do more and we could, we could get more donations. But one thing I did want to do is I didn't want to be one of these charities, these big charities where people didn't know where their money went or where the program actually affected what areas. Um, and so, we, we, we wanted to make sure that when we established uh, these, this charity, that we wanted to make it community centered. And so we, we developed these, um, these communities into chapters. So we had the Twin Falls chapter where I live, and then my, my buddy Jordan Allen was up in Boise, and he, he, he started the Boise chapter. And then a lot of people, friends and family, saw what we were doing throughout the years, you know, 2014, 15. About, well, 2015, it now became more than just a Christmas project. Um, the, the need for beds was becoming more and more prevalent. And as I did my research, um, child bed, bedlessness is a major problem, um, but there's no solution for it. There was very few, I could only find one charity in the entire country that actually was dedicated to building or delivering beds to kids. So it was a bigger problem than I realized and there was no solution to it, um, or no good one. And so uh, we started to doing more builds through the year. Um, we actually ended up doing about 15, 16 builds in 2016, which really broadcasted a lot of what we were doing, which resulted in a lot of people, a lot of friends across the country seeing what we were doing. Um, and it, it developed into nine chapters. And, and some of them were you know, close friends, you know, some friends in Diego, they wanted to start a chapter, some friends in Texas um, that all knew either me or Jordan one way or the other. Um, but we also had some people that didn't know who we were at all and just were building a bed for their daughter and they wanted, they had fun, they wanted to do it for another child. So they researched it and came up, came across our website. And uh, in fact, one particular story, Nate Miller out of Minnesota, he called me up and says, hey, I, you know, I'd like to I'd like to get your plans and see how you build them. And he's far better word woodman crafter than I am. But, uh, but I said, well, you know, no problem. Here's the plans, but I got a better solution. Why don't you just be a chapter and do what we do? And he's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. I pro I could probably build four or five beds a year. And I just laughed because <laughs> that, that guy now builds well over 300 beds a year. He's wow. built thousands of beds for kids. Um, yeah. And so and that's and that's the result is is we have good people across the country that learn about us, um, have the same passion about getting children off the floor and they want to help. And that's the avenue that that we've we've created now. And so since then and and through other major media events that we've been a part of, Sleep and Envy Peace has 270 chapters in four different countries, 46 states, and we've built 80,000 plus beds. Wow. That is incredible. I 
I have heard your story many times and I never get sick of it. It captivates me every time. It's so powerful. And um, I guess we should mention, because our viewers won't know, that we both gave um, TEDx talks. And yes. so um, we go way back now. <laughs> yeah, everybody. I learned a lot from April. She's far better at public speaking than I am. <laughs> oh, that's very kind of you. I don't, I don't know if that's true, but thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't know how you felt, but I mean, I've been on some pretty big stages, you know, CNN Heroes, American Ninja Warrior. Uh, been a, I was on a potato, potato chip bag, ladies' potato chip bag. Mm -hmm. You know, some pretty cool fun things. I'll tell you what, there's nothing nothing like trying to memorize a stupid 12 minute speech <laughs> and give it out. Oh man, it was terrible. Yeah, that was, that was intense for sure. For yeah. sure. But I remember the first time I heard your story and it, it's just so powerful and I love it because you created this movement that really is changing the world off of one social media post. And I love that so much because um, when I go around and I speak in schools to kids, I talk about creating more than you consume online. And you are such a huge example of that, of the power that social media can be that you can use for good. Um, I mean, gosh, so how many beds have you built so far? Do you even have a number? We do, it's um, 80,025. 80, we just wow. surpassed 80,000 last weekend. And and, uh, and and I will say, you know, I know what you do and, and your story is, is equally as awesome. And, 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 and really for what we're dealing with today, and trust me, as a parent, I've, I've faced this head on. It's extremely important that we teach these kids the value of uh, and the importance of what what such a major beast that social media yeah. can be, both for good and negative. And and mm -hmm. you know when I first uh, even before sleeping on the peace, I really wasn't much of a social media guy. I mean, right? You know, but it's, isn't it interesting to see how social media has evolved? And, and just like anything in life, it is either extremely negative um, or hopeful, hopefully extremely positive. And I think we as humanity, as humans, don't we have the, don't we have the choice to, to, to put on there uh, and, and choose which side we want to? And, and, you know, there for a long time, before Sleep Out of the Peace, I just couldn't stand all the negativity that was on there and whether it was political or religious or whatever, I just couldn't stand it. it just, I, you know, I, I try to be, there's enough in the world to be negative. Why go, go search for it when you don't have to on Facebook. Right. Right. Yeah. So, but sleep in Emily peace has really given me an open, really opened my eyes, April to the good that that can come from social media. You know, that's our number one reach and, and awareness raising tool is uh, social media and, and cause it's free and it, and it touches thousands of people in an instant. Um, yeah. and, and, and I think I, I try to adopt that in all aspects of my social media life, right? Trying to be inspiring rather than tearing down, trying to, trying to inspire people to do good than trying to teach them a lesson. Right. I, I just think it's important and, and a great opportunity Avenue to use those, uh, those social media postings to, to share inspirational stories with people. Yeah, absolutely. It is such social media is huge as we know and would you say it's your biggest advertiser how no you reach the most people and like you said it's free it's free yeah. marketing such a yeah, powerful we, tool to you yeah we have every chapter every 270 chapters uh they all have their own facebook page um that that we post stuff on and we do that because we want people uh in the community to see what what their local chapter is doing, you know, see the kids that, mm -hmm. that their donated dollars are going to see the beds and the, and the quilts that get made and the, and the great stories behind these, these uh, families that are in need. And, um, and so, and, and the best way to get that out 
is through social media and and it, and really and it also brings community together we we post events we we our a lot of our chapters have delivery groups that get together people that would probably never otherwise cross paths or even be friends are now weekly get together friends they go deliver beds and then they go out to dinner and they they go on date nights together it just builds all these great communities and these great these great relationships with people why because they met on social media through sleep and emily peace or or, or any organization right doing good for for someone else yeah you really um like we say there's there's dark and there's light to social media and you create so much light and goodness on social media and um, it has just spread worldwide. It's absolutely incredible. And um, I love to actually share your story sometimes in high schools because I really want to encourage these teens to think about what their relationship with social media is. And I mean, there's teenagers that have built multi-million dollar companies in their teens off of social media. Um, it's such a powerful tool, but on the flip side of that, there's been hundreds of teens that have lost scholarships and jobs and their reputations all from one social media post. Or, or, or their life. Right. Yeah. Which is really sad. I mean, they're just locally in our little small town here, you know, we had, we had a little girl, I can't remember how old she was, 14, 15, something like that, that committed suicide from the online bullying that she received uh, through social media, you know, and, and I have a four, I have a, well, excuse me, I have almost a 16 year old. So <laughs> make sure, you know, she's counting the days. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so, and, and I tell you what, you know, um, there was a period of time when she had her phone and she was heavily involved and, and glued to it. And your, her demeanor and her, uh, let's call it rebelliousness, was so high because of all of the junk that she was getting involved with, that people were saying and, and, and she was seeing. And when we took her phone away, like any parent, parent does, right, um, you could physically see her aura change and how how much mm -hmm. more positive she was and and what's what's beautiful we went quite a while without a phone over a month and now you know she's like i don't even think i need a phone dad i want her to have a phone so i can talk to her but <laughs> you know, but it, it, it's really I, I think she and it was a good parent moment to actually see her recognize um yeah. that it, it can it can be a, a dark place for sure yeah, absolutely. Such a powerful tool that's created for adults that has been put in the hands of even small children and it can turn dangerous really quickly. Absolutely. But um, I just think it would be so powerful if each um, kid started out on social media with a goal whether it was to create some type of movement or to serve or just posting um, positive things every day, just to get in the habit of creating light and goodness on social media and not getting sucked into the darkness that it can be. I, I try to teach my kids, if you're gonna post something, make sure it's uplifting, yeah. right? When you're not gonna teach anybody, you know, and no one cares about your, your, your negative opinions, you know, right. whether, they, whether they agree with them or not, you know, um, just post something positive, share with the world, your uplifted, your, your, your glow, your shine, your, your happiness. And, uh, you know, all it takes, and I, my Ted talk was about tiny moments, you know, um, all it takes is that one little moment of inspiration, wherever it comes from. I tell my daughter, you could say something really nice about a teacher or or a friend that maybe someone hears that and gets just this little inkling inkling of a notion to say, you know, maybe I should call that person up or maybe I should invite them to a party or something or 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 a birthday party or or what have you. Maybe I can reach out and be a friend. And you just never know. That might be the start of a lifelong friendship, you know. And in my case, it was that little notion of, you know what? Why don't I just get off the couch just this one time and teach my kids the value of service? 
and giving back to everybody else. And, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that from that, there's been 80,000 kids across the country. More, more importantly, there's been communities of people that have come together to help those 80,000 kids. Because this guy right here, he didn't do it. And when he dies, if he dies tomorrow, there'll be 80,000 more in the next couple of years because of great people out there that have decided to, you know what, I want to make a difference in the world. I can, I can, I can post positive things either on my social media pages, or I can just be a positive person and choose the light rather than darkness. Yeah, absolutely. Because not only do you get kids up off the floor and into beds, which is absolutely incredible, but you also give people an avenue to serve. Um, which is fantastic. I joke every time I talk to you, I just get like so pumped up. Like, I'm like, I'm gonna help more people. I'm gonna buy a drill and I'm gonna build a bed, which I'm still gonna come build a bed with you one of these days. <laughs> yeah, but um, it's you're just so inspirational and I love what you're doing and the goodness that you're pumping out on social media to inspire people and um, giving people a way to help. I didn't know that child bedlessness was a thing until I met you. I had no clue. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's a hidden it's a hidden pandemic, really. You know, um, our, our statistics. There's not even good statistics. It's just what SHPs come up over the last decade, it's roughly 3%, 3% of the population. You're in a town of 100,000 people, there's there's 3,000 kids that are sleeping on the floor, on a couch with mom. I mean, really uncomfortable situation. And you know, the sad thing is, and I don't blame them, because like you, like me, like anybody, when you first experience or first hear about child bedlessness, I mean, April, for crying out loud, it's not even a real word, bedlessness. Right, yeah. It's a real problem. And, mm -hmm. and when, when you hear about it, we usually get two reactions. The first one is, well, it can't be that big. It's not that big of a problem. Sure, almost every kid's got a bed. There might be one or two here. No, no, it's 3%. Or, and, and, and that's just people that we know. It's probably double that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, and the second reaction is, okay, well, not in my community, in a third world country or maybe in some really poverty-stricken area. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's right next door. It's right. In fact, we have one chapter president tell a story about how he's been he's been uh, delivered, building, delivered beds for a couple of years and had a lady stand up in his own church who he'd been going to church with for many, many years, stand up. And she said, you know, my, my kids don't have beds. Could could you build one for mine? And he just was blown away. He's like, uh, I, I had no idea. No one knew. Yeah. Yeah. It's man, it's incredible. And um, so I also wanted to talk really quick about all the cool things that you've gotten to do. It's fun for me to sit back and watch my friend Luke like on America Ninja Warrior. Uh, that was let's call cool. Hum let's call it humbling things to do. <laughs> and walking through the grocery <laughs> store for months and seeing your face on Lay's potato chips. Isn't that crazy? I don't know. It's you know, American Ninja Warrior was was fun, but also extremely stressful in a lot of ways. You know, normally, and you know how it is when you when you're going out and you're talking to people, you just have to perform and say what you need to say. Whatnot. Usually, the words and the mission tell its own story. American Ninja Warrior is a little different. You kind of had to physically perform. <laughs> and right. I, was, I am not. I mean, let's be honest. The last time I swung on a rope, I was 12. Come on. You know, I, I'm 40. I'm 43 years old. I ain't gonna be able to swing on a, on a on a rope and grab another one very easily. So no, but it was it was a great experience, and I did it mainly, obviously, to to share with the world what Sleep and Heavenly Peace is, and 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 the Lay's potato chip bag as well. I mean, all these CNN heroes, the Good, you know, good Morning America, you know, a Hallmark, all these all these productions and and medias that I've been a part of. Is is really has everything to do with trying to let people know what child bedlessness really is, yeah. how bad it is. Number one and number two, that you know what, you at home, you can be a part of it. You can be a part of the solution. You can get off the couch like like this crazy little Idaho kid did, and and you know put a drill in your hand and build a bed for a kid that's going to last ten plus years. Yeah. 
Well, and you can just feel the passion that you have for what you do, which is really cool, which you talked about in your TED Talk. Wasn't it titled um, Passion and Purpose or something? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, see, I can remember some things. <laughs> so, if people want to help um, with Sleep in Heavenly Peace, what do they do? How do they help? How do they find you? Absolutely. And we made it pretty, pretty simple. <clears throat> you know, so if you want to, first of all, if you know of a child, maybe your child or your neighbor's child, your sister that lives three states away, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're an organization that helps, you know, homeless transition or whatever. All you have to do, anybody can go to shpbeds.org, shpbeds, plural.org. That's our website. And there's a tab up there called apply for a bed. So you can apply for yourself. You can apply as a reference for someone else. And depending on the zip code that you enter, if one of our chapter presidents has accepted that zip code as a deliverable area, then they'll get that, that uh, application and, and, and vet that application out. So anybody, uh, if you know of a child sleeping on the floor, please, we want to help them. And if you're just wanting to donate or volunteer your time, you can also go to shpbeds.org and find the chapter. There's a little button called find a chapter. Click in the state that you live in, find the chapter that's closest to you and contact the chapter president and say, hey, I'd like, I'd like to be a part of this. I'd like to know more and, and help out on a local level. You can also donate directly to that chapter. You know, April, that's one thing I, I did not want to do when I started a nonprofit. I didn't want money to just go in this big pie in the sky. Right. No one knew where it went. You never, you know, not at all. What, what, what we always set up was slipping on the piece. And trust me, it's not easy and it's not um, inexpensive to do this in some ways. But people can now, you can go right to the chapter and donate directly to that chapter. And that money goes to that chapter president and goes to that community to help out. So if you got a sister in Florida, Tampa Bay, Florida, that you want to help out, or you can help that chapter out by donating directly to that chapter. And, and probably the third, the third way, uh, if you're really interested in being more involved with Sleep in Emily Peace, again, on our website, uh, you can click on start a chapter. And actually, if there's not a chapter close to you and you want to be a chapter president, you click on that tab and you'll, you'll get a lot of information about what a chapter president does, the process, um, and, and start that road of, of learning or maybe even becoming a chapter president. I hope that people will because it's such an awesome opportunity. And thank you so much for joining me today. I sure appreciate it. And thanks for joining us today on Screen Smart. If you have any questions, you can find me on Instagram at the April Whiting. And remember, you are your child's best act. <laughs>